You're listening to the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to make sure you get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Hello, I'm Gideon Haig, and you're listening to the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. Let's talk about our next topic, Gideon. Let's talk about the state of international cricket. And there are many problems facing the game internationally. Um, you know, the game's free three formats, their future, the international schedule, calendar, and the ICC's governance. So, so Gideon, how do you see the future of the three formats and um, your thoughts on the international schedule and calendar? Can that be improved or is it too late to fix that? It's already gone. And how the ICC have gone about governing the game, um, in your opinion? God, how long have you got? Um... <laughs> Well, the biggest, I mean, look, the biggest, uh, the biggest, the overwhelming factor in everything, it's the biggest advantage and the biggest threat to international cricket is the huge asymmetry that's opened up between India and the rest of the world. You know, the game has never been richer, but it's also never been relatively poorer in, in various places. That, that huge... Uh, problem which which i don't think any other game has in the world any other sort of international game where one country is so overwhelmingly economically um, and administratively powerful uh is is a huge factor and the, and the failure of the icc to do anything to kind of counteract or or mitigate that the general weakness at the center of of cricket governance uh, is now coming home to roost. You know, there was an opportunity for governance reform at the ICC in 2012. That the, Everyone funked it. Everyone thought that it would be advantageous to, to themselves to have a weak centre. Everyone thought that, they, uh, that it was advantageous to potentially subvert the system. Well, now they've found out that, um, that they failed. They, they missed their opportunity and... Um, now, in this next potential distribution uh, for the for the next four years, that's been foreshadowed that the ICC will vote on in the in the next uh, month or so, uh, shows that the game's in a, a pathetic state. Pathetic state uh, that um, that India will end up when India already so hugely richer than everywhere else, just simply because of the lucrative nature of the IPL will also rake off the lion's share of proceeds from, from international cricket, is a massive failure of imagination uh, and, and a massive indictment of, uh, of, of those in charge. Yeah. Um, so do, do you see the, the future looking grim? Um, do you think yes, countries absolutely. will struggle? And do you absolutely. think that yeah. they'll pull out of cricket altogether, probably? Um well, I think that just I don't see any forces around to change that. You know, I think everyone kind of understands the problems, but there's no one around who's actually willing to posit a, a solution. Uh, and the formula that the ICC has arrived at is a prescription for uh, um, you know, sort of assisted suicide of the uh, of of international cricket. Um, I think we're already seeing that the, fran the franchise future of the of, of the game being manifest, which raises a whole heap of problems. Um, you know, because the franchise game is essentially parasitic on international cricket. It is dependent on all those nurseries around the cricket world for developing the players that uh, that that franchises uh, want to exploit. But franchises, franchises don't care a damn for, uh, for for cricket. They're only interested in um, in the profit motive. And, uh, you know, the people who are about to own these franchises have no loyalty to the game either. If they weren't investing in cricket, they'd be investing in chopped liver. Uh, they'd be investing in another industry. It just so happens that cricket offers lucrative returns. So, um, yeah, uh, I've, I've enjoyed cricket. <laughs> But um, but I'm not sure that uh, well the game won't look the same when my daughter comes time to uh, to, to uh, savor the game. Um, but look, I've had my time. Um, 
maybe I shouldn't mourn too much, change is inevitable. Uh, it's happening at a speed now, uh, yeah. rather like AI in some ways, where it doesn't feel like we're in control anymore. Uh, it feels as though decisions are being made remotely and inevitably, not according to any kind of strategic thought, but simply for, for short-term benefits. Uh, so, yeah. yeah it's when, a problem. But, you know, whenever there's money and, and that involved, yeah. it's always greed and selfishness and not thinking about others and the greater good of, of the game, and that's what, yeah. what's happening in world cricket at the moment, which is a mm. shame. Hi, everyone. Hope you enjoyed listening to Gideon and I talk about the state of international cricket. If you want to listen to Gideon's Cricket Podcast, etc., etc., with fellow cricket writer Peter Laylor, the links to that are in the description of this episode.